probably we are going to uh, talk about this, and we have our esteemed uh, panel here. Uh, Gautam and Mithuna here, and Anjani will uh, be joining us uh, online shortly. So, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, just a few days back, uh, Gautam uh, and Mithun, you know, uh, this uh, new uh, uh, logistics policy was uh, announced. So, you know, very, very quickly, if I can uh, get your views on, uh, you know, how do you view it? Was it enough? Was it little short? Or was it, uh, you know, or, or was it very short or it's compensated for whatever, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, gaps were there in the uh, past? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know post-lunch session, uh, you might be eager to have something more as a dessert, so definitely I'll put some flavor. Uh, my name is Gautam Kumar. Once again, uh, before coming to your question, I'm co-founder at a company called Farai. And definitely, like, they won't allow to sell our product. That's what I'm telling my company name, right? So, uh, like, uh, 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 we are working in 230 countries. Uh, we have complete delivery management software. We have started from last mile delivery, then leverage to uh, long haul and first mile as well, working with companies like uh, DHL to Walmart on the global level. Uh, on, on coming to the uh, logistic policy, right, and now, like, uh, I will follow you, your direction uh, in the Q&A, right? So definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you will ask my optics, definitely it's an amazing move from the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, his involvement. Even like in 2020, I was part of ULEAP as well uh, from the industry's body. Uh, so I can give like a, a, you know, like a complete sense about the expectation and, and whatever Honorable Prime Minister has given view, uh, you know, on the entire logistic policy. That is what I have seen last three years. Uh, team is working hard from the back end. Uh, they had like pool of consultants. They have pool of industries bodies where like I participated. In fact, uh, uh, I was one of the member in the ULIP designing body as well. That is a unified logistic integra integrated platform. So definitely it's an amazing move. Uh, and you know, like, because logistic is like a complete working on the shared economy. So definitely uh, this will give amazing uh, dimension, direction to the SMBs, uh, large business houses, uh, and economy to India as well. Definitely I'll add a lot of flavor if you'll have further question on this, uh, uh, right? But, but over here, you know, like through the ULIP, I wanted to talk more because it's a unified layer of integrated technology. So definitely like uh, uh, starting from the sellers to uh, you know, transporter to the uh, buyers, the end consumer, everyone is coming on the same platform and everyone is getting the right KPIs, right matrices while you are going to do deliveries uh, in the physical manner, but you should have, uh, you know, digital touch points where you can measure, you can predict delivery, you can communicate your end consumer, end buyer uh, uh, in amazing manner at the same time the largest benefit for all the operator, operating company would be where like at least you can have, uh, you know, booking of the empty trucks. Earlier there was hell of empty trucks were moving on the road. Now you can sell the volume of the empty truck while they are returning to the different location after delivering goods. Uh, uh, you know, so definitely it's an amazing move. And we are talking about, you know, five trillion economy, uh, bringing logistic cost, uh, you know, 8% of the 5 trillion, definitely it's a huge number, like a $400 billion number. So definitely our country is moving in different direction and government is pushing very hard. So personally, I'm quite happy. Uh, and my views are also very good because this will support 40 million uh, mid-market players, small market players in India to grow their business because of this move. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Mithun, your views. Hey guys, uh, I'm Mithun. I'm the CEO of Blowhorn. Um, we do intracity logistics, a quarter million deliveries every day, and we operate in 100 cities. Um, even prior to Blowhorn, I have worked a fair bit in logistics, almost like one and a half decades, so I'm fairly conversant uh, with the policy. And um, the good thing about the policy is it lays out a framework, a framework for coordination between various departments, state departments. The key issue with India is if you go to any Indian port in terms of productivity, I think we do as many moves as maybe a Japanese port or a, or a Rotterdam port and so on, right? So we, we have very highly productive ports 
we have decent highways, we have decent hinterland connections, but the key issue always tends to be uh, the coordination between the various ministries, let's say within the port to the customs and from the customs to the hinterland and you know the railway ministries and so on. The coordination was the missing piece. And what this policy does is uh, takes it by the scruff of the neck, the problem, the elephant in the room, which is coordination, and kind of lays out a framework for many things to come together. So in that way, it's a very optimistic policy. It's a great policy. And uh, again, you know, the biggest opportunity is the biggest uh, challenge, which is getting all the government bodies to work together. The other good things about the policy is uh, I agree, it's, it's kind of medium-ish, it's not too short, it's not too long, but it covers a fair bit of pieces. But the good thing is it also covers things like drone deliveries and so on. I feel that uh, logistics is a high intensity business. So what logistics does is it creates a lot of jobs in ancillary sectors. And uh, they have not just focused on roads and you know multimodal uh, transport parks and so on, which is obviously the bones of logistics, but they've also focused on the new age pieces like drone delivery and so on, which is very exciting and interesting for a logistician. Okay, all right. So, uh, you know, there's one uh, major aim of the policy which the Prime Minister also spoke about, is that, uh, you know, it is to bring down the cost of logistics from around, you know, 14, 17% that we have to around 8% as is in the <clears throat> developed, uh, you know, markets nations. So what does it really mean for the, you know, logistics player? Because, because isn't it, uh, you know, uh, 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 what does, I mean, uh, does it mean a small market or a competitive market because the TAM's going down? So explain us that what does it really mean for players like you? Gotham, maybe stop. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's a very interesting thing. In fact, like I was also addressing yesterday one of the media house, and uh, you know, uh, great question. So, 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 largely, uh, you know, uh, if somebody is talking about less money, it doesn't mean uh, you know low low revenue, right? It's it's all about definitely market is very challenging, competitive, right? But at the same time, when you are going to get integrated, when you are going to talk about efficiency, when you are going to increase the revenue to the all the stakeholders mapped in the value chain, then definitely your total cost will go down. Like a shared economy, we have seen Ola, Uber of the economy, right? Because you are going to increase the facility, you are reaching customer at the right place, you are leveraging, orchestrating technology to have the benefit to have the benefit to the individuals, so definitely uh, it will leverage to a small players, individuals, and and the way economy is growing, uh, you know, time will come where uh, you will see uh, working closely with ONDC as well. Uh, government has launched like a open network digital commerce sort of UPI sort of layer. What I have seen, you know, like now individual sellers sitting in a small places like. Uh, you know, Midnapur or Nasik, they can also think about how we can sell product not only in different part of the country, but we can also sell those product, you know, handcrafted item to the part of Manchester, London, New York, Washington and all right. So definitely, uh, you know, you will have better access to the market, uh, you will have good control on the price. Uh, so, so uh, you know, as per me, uh, because economy is growing, talking about trillions, five trillions, honorable prime minister has given the direction and definitely what we are talking about close to $400 billion of the organized market rather I'll say, earlier it was not organized, now it's looking like that we are talking about the organized market. So definitely uh, there would be pressure to improve the quality, but at the same time, uh, you will have access of lot of buyers and then you can think about, you can increase your revenue, you can increase your EBITDA as well uh, through that challenge. Yeah. Okay, um, it's a very interesting question that uh, I think the broad answer is the pie will increase significantly. So even if we are trying to bring the cost of logistics down, the pie will be much bigger as we go through the journey. So net to net, I think companies will do better. But the real constraint of taking logistics costs from 14 or 13% to 8% uh, 
is also limited by geography. So if you look at the countries which have 8% logistics cost, which is possibly the states, to some extent, they are 9 to 10%, or Germany, which is 8%, they have a very organized inland waterway. Now, the cost of moving goods on the inland waterway compared to road is 120th. So what that does is, if you, if you can transfer some of your goods by sea or by water in any form, you tend to kind of bring those efficiencies back into play. But the bigger advantage of India is actually it's a peninsular country. So coastal shipping should take off in a big way. If we have to come from 13% all the way to 8% or even aspire to come close to 8%, we have an advantage of coastal shipping, but at the same time, we have a uh, regulation which is very backward. It's in the US, it's called the Jones Act. So we have a slightly protectionist regulation on the coastal shipping. So if, if you're able to unlock that and even focus on river movement and so on, and on top of that, add the next low intensity mode, which is rail, and then focus on roads as well coming together, then you know the mix of all these three things we might aspire to come to close to 8%. But if you ask me honestly, I think it will be very, very difficult because I think the infrastructure has to catch up significantly in the short term to kind of come to that. But it's a, it's a very good North Star to guide the country to kind of move in the direction of 8%. But, but we, we have also heard that, you know, this, this not to look at the uh, logistics policy standalone, but you know, it, it gets integrated with Sagar Mala, Bharat Mala and others. So what you're talking about the inland and coastal, this thing, if that gets implemented, do you think still will be uh, difficult because of the size of the geogra uh, geography? I mean, uh, I'll give you an example which is quite popular, right? So many people use this. So we have like massive uh, medium to low quality coal supplies in the east of India. But even then we have to import coal. Right? So it all, it's all a function of moving goods in the most efficient fashion, right? Mm. Uh, and sometimes it, it, just, it just so happens that the logistics cost is cheaper. So we, I think this is a great move, but we have to be realistic. I feel there are a lot of beautiful things to be done, but if just the governments can talk together, all the departments can talk together, I think we can achieve that goal much faster than we anticipate. Mm. Coordination seems to be the issue. Yeah, okay. just wanted to add over here, uh, you know, right now if you'll see uh, in 24 hours the average truck, the maximum truck movement rather I'll say is like a 300 to 325 kilometer in 24 hours. If you'll take the example of European country, uh, it's close to uh, north of 700 kilometer in 24 hours. So definitely there is a big challenge on the regulator that is government, right, to, to uh, you know, uh, enforce all those uh, regulations now government is having uh, you know fast tag as a tracker through the tool booth uh, another layer is like a, a gst portal where like e ha is having data of source and destination another one is e wahan you know just only by integrating all those layers definitely government will also work and working from the back end uh, how to start some of the green corridor in india and definitely it won't happen overnight it needs participation from industries bodies from uh, small uh, market players and definitely government is also taking this challenge to be very honest and that's what like uh, policy is talking about and uh, all those like a uh, uh, big corridor has been opened up uh, with the name of malas and all right and that's what government has also started uh, 35 multimodal uh, uh, multimodal, uh, you know, ports over there. So definitely, these things will orchestrate, uh, and and uh, this will result into, uh, you know, achieving those targets in a very cost-effective way and in a very efficient way. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, just Mithun. Just to your point about coal, uh, I think it's more about the calorific value of the coal because of which we need to import coal rather than the availability of the coal. So I understand sure. what you mean, but yeah, that's the. But there is a difference in that uh, example. I agree. But, 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 but I'll go to another thing that you talked about is about the pie, that, you know, whether the pie is increasing or decreasing. So, you know, with increasing internet penetration and, you know, uh, 
growing awareness and we have these witnessed online commerce proliferating to you know, the most remote, uh, remote corners of the, of the country. While, uh, mm, you know, it is understood that it means opportunities for logistics players as well. But there are challenges also, as you said, in the hinterland. So, you know, what, 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 can, we, what can we do about that to solve that problem, Mithul? Okay. Um, so the way I understood your question is underpenetration in smaller towns. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously when we think about decreasing the logistics cost, I mean, but still, as you said, that, you know, hinterland still remains, you know, decently developed. So, sure. you know, what are the challenges there that you're facing and you would want to be addressed? Funnily enough, uh, at least for Blohorn, uh, our tier two, tier three city network is growing about three to four times that of our tier one cities in terms of growth. And uh, what actually worked uh, for the hinterlands was uh, COVID coming in, and a lot of people moved back home, and you know they started ordering online and so on, and you know companies had to catch up and they had to do deliveries to tier two, tier three cities, including us. And uh, we saw that habits changed in the past two years. And this is not a new pattern, right? So after the SARS pandemic in Far East, uh, e-commerce took off in a big way. So there are some good uh, uh, tailwinds uh, on the technology and adoption front. Uh, what, what would help is, uh, I think, if Indian government also focuses on India Post and kind of uh, finds a way to kind of leverage the beautiful network and the amazing uh, kind of coverage it has. And that would be very interesting. And I read somewhere that Indian railways, the length of Indian railways is almost like 90, 95% the length of Chinese uh, railway system. But the goods intensity on Indian rail is much lower. So I think that is one more key to unlock uh, hinterland value. Right. But DFC is coming up for that. Come again? DFC is coming up. Dedicated freight corridors are coming up. I mean, up. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been there for a while as a concept. Uh, but, you know, hopefully this policy will supercharge that. Okay. Okay. Gautam, in terms of technology, uh, do you think it's easier to serve India compared with Bharat? Uh, India comparison to? With Bharat. I mean, as in rural India. Okay. So, Bharat, I know, like, uh, you're talking about uh, old era or new era? <laughs> you know, Bharat still is the same. You go out okay. there. I come from one, one such place, so I know. Uh, no, so uh, what I'm going to consider, like you're talking about India equal to Bharat plus Delta, that is the new one, right? So uh, definitely uh, technology is backbone to India, and I'll touch upon India Post uh, and different thing when like recently I was traveling to US. And uh, you know, like even personally, I was surprised after seeing the growth of India, you talk about COVID system, you talk about payment gateways, the seamless payment that government has created. So definitely uh, we have lot of uh, technology capital in India and government is leveraging that. Uh, in fact, last to last week, I was addressing to almost 35 uh, postmaster general of Asia and uh, what Mithun was talking about India post definitely the way Japan came with joint venture with uh, Rukete and that is like an e-commerce company in Japan and Japan post they started collaborating and that's what like in China uh, the way Alibaba is using that uh, the entire network definitely uh, it will take a lot of time to India post now we have amazing coverage uh, and 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 definitely, uh, if you'll ask me from the tech perspective, only thing you will have to add technology. Uh, infrastructure is ready. People are ready. They are trained. They are using WhatsApp and different applications. So, uh, but only thing uh, you know, your your customer sort of Walmart, Amazon wants the visibility. You know, so they can communicate better to their customer. So definitely government is investing and time will come where like India Post will be serving to the rest of the e-commerce players of the globe and definitely that would be much faster, much richer, much cheaper as well and at the same time in the reverse way, uh, you know, time will come where like there would be a lot of JVs created along with the way we are growing, Indian econ economy is growing, definitely it will uh, serve to ONDC, uh, 40, 45 million sellers will come on the platform. They will have buyers from the different part of the country. 
further like it will enhance because government like honorable prime minister were talking for the exim policy as well export import policy i'm sure like ice gate uh, would be integrated with uh, you know lot of systems from the tech wise and definitely these things in europe where we are working with companies like finland post leave that even in middle east what we have seen working with emirates post and all everything is integrated now government is ready data are there in the silos we have everything like uh, aadhar otp verification uh, you know to all those like uh, uh, gst fast tag wahan you can integrate everything you can take decision within fraction of the second and you can move the shipment so definitely technology would be one of the biggest lever to to optimize uh, the cost but rather i will advocate everyone is getting bigger revenue while you are going to optimize the cost uh, and that's what like ulip is one of the great move from the government and uh, niti ayog has orchestrated well and now like i'm sure uh, it's looking like companies like blowhorn companies like any operating company in india uh, blue dot dt dc might be getting benefit while they are delivering shipments because the per day number of miles per hour number of miles has been increased significantly and the way like uh, because of the geopolitical issues uh, fuel prices are rising you have not seen that the courier prices or delivery prices are rising because of that that uh, uh, you know efficiency that government is bringing into the system yeah all right thank you